at this point, our primary goal, get it running as a diesel on all of the Jetta suspension work. And then after the rally, we will fix all the rust and make it pretty er. Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is Wrench Every Day. Today's going to be an episode where we kind of give you a state of the shop. How are projects going? Where they're standing? There's been a lot of comments and questions about when another project may be coming back. So we wanted to take this opportunity to go through and just kind of update you on everything that we've got going on with the project, some of the delays and what to be looking forward to in the near future. And also show you some of the really cool new equipment that we've got here at Site B. It's been really cool lately. Uh, had some friends selling some equipment at a really good deal and it's some heavy fabrication stuff so we can do some really neat projects in the near future. But of course, buying new equipment takes money. And that's a great time for me to introduce today's sponsor, one we've had before, Cove Audio. Today we are talking about the Cove Commuter 2 Bluetooth speaker system. It's a great, fantastic device that we love to have playing in the background. It does have a subwoofer. These aren't just radiators. It kicks out a great amount of bass. You can have it connect wirelessly to your tablet, your phone, computer via Bluetooth and have over 30 feet of range. So you can keep that device nice and safe and utilize the IPX7 water resistance rating, having to sit next to the hot tub while you keep your phone safe. Speaking of keeping your phone safe, if you're enjoying that music and get a phone call, the built-in microphone is going to let you be able to answer that call and talk with surprising clarity. Another neat party trick is a beautiful 360 degree sound when connected, or if you want to fill an entire room out, you can split the speakers, set them apart from each other, and create a great left-right surround sound. And here we get that nice, rich sound. You get the fun little light show out of the speakers as well. I do recommend being careful if you set them on a curved surface, as you can kind of tell by that streak. I had a bit of a bassy song come on and one of the speakers walked itself off the car, hit the ground and is still playing just fine. Now, if you want to get your own Commuter 2 Bluetooth speaker system, save a ton of money by using our discount code in the description below. I'm sure Dwayne will put it on the screen as well here for you as well. You guys are amazing at supporting us and supporting our sponsors, and we make it a point to only provide you with sponsors we actually use, and you will almost always see a Cove Audio product in one of our videos, unless the wife has stolen it, which I finally uh, have wrestled these back because I, I needed it for the video. Check it out, all the information in the description below. All right, so we cover the equipment first or the cars first? Equipment, cars, let's do cars first. You've seen us working quite recently on Johnny Rev here. We've got him back after another trip to Site C, GRC, where we got the trans cross member done. We've got the shock absorbers in it and a couple other just a heavy fabrication stuff that we knocked out in a day, a very long, tiring day. And man, does it look so much better with the wheels pointed mostly in the right direction. And, you know, I'm really amped to be driving this truck soon. But talking about wheels pointing in the wrong direction, we ended that episode with giving a little bit of gas and the truck would shoot and physically turn left, meaning that steering rack was damaged. The guys at J&J are awesome. They're sending us the new steering rack and they're also going to send us the new crank pulley that had a bad wobble because that came from a donor engine in the car that wasn't a hard front impact. So it initially looked okay, but once we're running, we found a problem. So. We're gonna get those parts in it, then I will put it up on a rack here and we are gonna fabricate a nice three inch exhaust with crossover section in it. I'm gonna take a look and see if we can get that steering shaft a little bit better. It's all right, but it could be improved. I'm just hoping not to have to buy that $600 drop gear box setup that will fix all our problems, but is also $600, that's a, that's a lot of money. So we're gonna try not to have to do that, but you know, it's on the table, but it's only money. I can just, you know, YouTube pays for it, right? Somehow, I, we'll figure it out. So we'll get that going. We will then hopefully put it on the dyno, which is a little bit sad right now. It had some electronics failure and we've been working on getting that up and running again. But 
That's kind of the state of the truck. It is just about there. We'll build a nice little tow hitch for it, have it ready to tow, and start using it. Eventually, we'll then come back and work on the interior and some other small, you know, creature comfort upgrades like getting the AC installed and working because uh, we need AC. It, it's warm. I'm sweating a good bit already, and I've got all the doors open. That's life. But we'll have Johnny Rev running soon doing burnouts and all kinds of great things. Next project that everyone's been asking about, Earl Leaker. He is almost exactly how we left him last time we had him featured. The wiring's still a mess. He's able, I can connect some wires, put power to it, and it'll fire right up. The reason we've not touched it is in one of the episodes, I talked about the complete custom wiring harness that I got for the car that was like 50 bucks. Uh, and I was talking about how we're gonna go through and build a complete wiring harness and wiring system for a car with nice switch integration and just some of those cool steps, Tavares heard about the fact we're going to do that and got excited and wanted to learn. That's a skill he doesn't have. He can do wiring, but as far as just building something complete from scratch, he doesn't know and he'd like to learn. And as informative as the videos are that I try to make for you guys, it's a lot easier to learn in person. So Earl's on a temporary hold until we bring him to Florida. And in order to do that, we've got to get Johnny running because the plan is to go ahead and tow Earl back to Florida with the truck, the muscle truck. The whole point of us building this truck is to be able to use it for wrench everyday towing projects, parts runs. That's the goal with the truck. Sure, the Titan would be fantastic with comfortable air conditioning and a nice smooth ride and everything you could want, but I think it's going to look a whole lot cooler behind that truck. So once we get back down to Florida, we will get the wiring fully fixed and not a absolute nightmare. We will get all of our cooling system put together and fabricated up, get our front bumpers back on. We will finish up in the rear and get Earl running. So it's not that we've forgotten about Earl. It's Tavares is very excited to have an opportunity to learn how to do something. And I actually like the idea of having Tavares there. So one, it's hard to be super interesting wiring. Like on, on the muscle truck, I spent three and a half days wiring and filming as much as I could, doing the best that you can make it interesting. And I think the final cut of that was maybe 15 seconds of the videos. So having another person there to ask questions, to, to help, you know, be a proxy for you guys will give us a better opportunity to share and uh, kind of do a little bit of teaching and go through that process. So. I'm excited to get Earl going again and, and get him running because he needs to. He's an awesome car, kind of a, uh, a ridiculous build, and we want to get it running. Another vehicle that some of you have been asking about is Miss Honda Rousey. So her initial race was delayed at the beginning of the year, what we were hammering so hard on the deadline, and then we've had so many other things come up. She has not forgotten about her race is in October now. And of course, that's gonna creep up on us and be there, you know, tomorrow's suddenly gonna be October. I was hoping before the next round of trips that I've got to do that I was going to go ahead and be able to get the donor engine completely clean and built up didn't quite work out. I still haven't found the overnight pixies to come in and get all the work done. Um, I still have to do all of this stuff and it takes a lot of time. And then there's always real life that comes in and says, hey, you're not working on the cars today. So we'll get through it. So that engine is still pretty much sitting exactly where we dropped it, making a pool. Soon that is going to be going on an engine stand. We are going to be cleaning, painting, resealing, and getting it ready for its race and all of its new pretty parts. I have decided on a color. I agreed with what a lot of the commenters were saying. You will see it when we paint it. But once we get that ready, we will start working on getting our firewall built, all of our subframe mounts built front and rear, and dressing this thing back up. We actually have a whole nother Honda Accord to donate for parts for Honda Rousey. But at this point, our primary goal, get it running as a diesel on all of the Jetta suspension work. And then after the rally, we will 
fix all the rust and make it pretty er because I think uh, having 400 foot pounds of torque in something that looks that I, I mean let's be honest Honda Rousey looks terrible but she also looks amazing it's one of those things that you can have both absolutes it is the worst looking and best looking vehicle out there so we still don't have a, a watertight trunk there's basically just no trunk seal because all the metal has uh, disappeared but that is okay another car that we've talked a little bit about and you've seen we've done some videos on is my 1991 Toyota Supra twin turbo R Dwayne can put a little picture or maybe even a video clip right there of it while I'm talking, I'll hold slightly offset, or he won't do it, and we're just gonna have some dead space. Aw, oh, come on, Jared, you're making this way too easy for me just to let you stand there and wait for me to put a picture or a video clip in there, so I'm just gonna sit here and let you wait a bit. Okay, that's probably enough, so um, I'll go ahead and put a picture and a video clip in there. Dwayne can put a little picture or maybe even a video clip right there of it while I'm talking. I'll hold slightly offset. So in the last SC300 episode where we got started to work a little bit on Tavarish's old car, he kind of fell back in love with it, which we fully expected him to do. Yeah, I'm in love with this car. I, I, am, I am really thoroughly enjoying this car and uh, hopefully people enjoy this car along with me. And rather than get a whole lot of work done, he decided to order a lot of parts. And then I decided to uh, remind him that the Supra is better than the SC in every aspect. I have the best, the pinnacle third generation Supra. Okay. What about if I get this like nice and clean with a, with just, you know, stock right. twins and then we race? That would be really unfair to you. Oh, would it now? Would it now? So we are now going to have a race. We are going to do, I guess, a quarter mile race. We are going to do some type of autocross or road course. I'm not sure. Uh, we have you know, several options out there that we're going to have good performance metrics that we are going to go through and see which one of our cars, old 1JZ cars, are better. Right now, my car is on a borrowed R154 transmission from my friend Brandon because I took parts out of mine and I've been waiting for a while to get my replacement parts from uh, the PGS transmission company. They are sending the dog box and I'll have the synchronizer parts shortly. So kind of a really unfair advantage over Tavarsh. I'll have that dog box. It is a synchronizer less transmission. It has teeth that you're able to just slam and shift incredibly quickly. So that's a big advantage on drag racing. It's an advantage on the road course. It's just an advantage across the board. Like that transmission alone is going to be enough to beat them. Well, I could probably beat them without the transmission, but that's okay. But I'm a big fan of insurance. You don't just go out there unprotected. You've got to have protection. So I got a hold of my friends at BNR Supercars, someone I introduced Freddy to for a couple of his projects, and he has got a really cool set of turbos that will look bone stock from the outside. Now, a lot of you say, just put a single turbo on it. I can't do that. It's the twin turbo R. It's not a single turbo R. So I want to keep the twin turbos. It's going to give me a little bit more top end. And then I've got another secret little upgrade. I don't want to let Freddie know, Tavares know all my secrets, um, because I don't think I'll know everything he's doing to the SC300, but we do know it's not going to be enough. The Super will prevail. Speaking of Supras, this poor girl. This was the 1989 Supra that my wife and I drove away from the wedding in, that she has a lot of fun driving stories. This has been talked about. You've not seen it directly on the channel, but you will. We can actually take a quick walk over. Dwayne can do a jump cut where poof, we're suddenly there. Now we're here. So this is the engine for my Supra. I have a lot of oils and just anti-rust corrosion inhibitors on it. Forged pistons, forged rods, billet main caps, everything you need to make a lot of horsepower in a 2JZ engine. So this power plant, I have got a lot of really nice cylinder head parts that we will be putting together as well. And when that happens, we're hopefully going to be able to do a tech video 
on what goes into a performance cylinder head. We'll talk a little bit about cylinder head porting, what exactly you can gain or lose while porting your cylinder head. We're gonna talk about valves and what they do. So I'm, I'm excited about that opportunity to one, get the cylinder head together, which is another step forward for the super coming back to life and getting back on the road, as well as getting a chance again for you guys to learn and see a little bit more about how these cars, how these engines work, what is a little bit different from street and performance. There we go, let me find some light on my face. So we've got that coming up again down the line. That is going to go into something we're not gonna talk about yet, but we have a spare LS1 that we're gonna be taking apart, building up and doing a few upgrades to, that uh, has a home in a car you might have seen in the background at some point in one of these videos, but we've got enough projects already on the table, so we're not gonna talk about it. Let's see, what else do we have in the stable? We've got the, my Lexus ISF. We've gotta do some maintenance on it here soon, and I've got some wheels and tire upgrades in the works for it, so you'll see that at some point in the future. So I think, I think that covers all the car, well, maybe, there, there's more cars, but that covers enough cars for now that lets you know about our major projects, Johnny Rev, Honda Rousey, Earl Leaker, the ones you guys care about. Now, let's talk about some of the equipment we got in to Site B that I am really excited to have. So first, we got ourselves this big old boy here. This is a Millermatic welder. It is the Sinker Wave 250 with water cooling. This thing is a beast. It's going to handle just about everything I'm going to ever want to weld here, which is fantastic. It's gonna let us do, again, aluminum, steel, titanium, maybe magnesium, I don't know, but anything we need to fab, I'm gonna be able to weld up with that. Your uh, trusty large upright belt sander, we can also put some uh, discs on the side. This is great for pipe fabrication, bracket fabrication. Something I'm extraordinarily excited about is this tool here. I will give you three seconds to comment what you think it's called. All right, it's an English wheel. This is a fantastic tool you don't see around much anymore, the art of using the English wheel is kind of dying, which is sad. A lot of the modern quick to make stamping dies are it's kind of making this obsolete. But what this tool is used for is forming really nice compound bends into sheet metal. You can roll out fenders and just all kinds of amazing sheet metal fabrication. You have a quick apply for your tension by moving that rod. You set your thickness or how much pressure with that and then you just very slowly work a piece of sheet metal back and forth through this tool. Different dies for different types of bends. I'm excited to have this. I don't know how quick I will make a usable part for it, but I plan to get some sheet metal to just destroy learning how to use this tool because it is, it's such a cool thing. I love watching really the artisans who are familiar with this tool work with it. It's here, I'm excited to get to use it. The other really nice tool we have is this big old bandsaw. Again, great for cutting out small intricate pieces of sheet metal and preparing sheet metal fabrication. One of the downsides is this blade, but it's also one of the really cool things about this blade. It's a very small, thin blade allowing for intricate moving cuts on that table. So that's a really exciting addition here to our fabrication capabilities here at Site B. Now with the nice TIG welder, and that's awesome sheet metal stuff. So we've got a couple more things we're gonna pick up here in a little bit and start putting together a fabrication area. And again, I'm excited to start getting to uh, do stuff with it. Well, storm's coming in if you didn't notice the uh, power's flickering. So I guess we better hurry up and get things wrapped up if the storm's gonna hit and we're gonna lose power because it doesn't matter what camera I use, I won't have any light then. So as always, appreciate you guys hanging out for the garage update, getting to know where some of your favorite projects stand, some of the projects you don't like stand, and some of the new exciting equipment we're getting ready to add here at Site B. I'm Jared, reminding you guys to always make questionable choices, and the tool is only as good as the person using it. Thanks, see ya.